Hi, I'm Andy from Traction. I'm going to talk a little bit about GWT and why we're using it for our next generation interface. So with, uh, with any interface, there are three things really to think about. Um, the very bottom level layer, you have uh, your data model. And um, then you have your presentation. And somewhere in between, you've got some interactions. Presentation, data models, you know, database, whatever you want it to be. I'm not going to talk much about that. Presentation, basically HTML, the XHTML, CSS. Um, interaction is, is what we really are, are looking to um, facilitate with, with GWT. So traditionally, this is just JavaScript. Um, and it's still JavaScript. But basically, you start out looking back 10 years ago, and people are using JavaScript image rollovers, things like that. Very basic. But as you start to build larger and larger applications, you need some more resources. And so there's a lot of toolkits out there. And I'll just name a couple. We've got um, Prototype, uh, Dojo, Tools, uh, jQuery, very popular, UE, and put GWT down here on the list. Um, the one thing I should mention is, in terms of interaction, we, we could have found some other routes, like uh, Flash, or uh, Air, or uh, Silverlight. And it would have maintained an HTML-based layout, a core um, basis for our, our presentation. So those sort of went off the table. Um, so we're really looking at these. And, and, and what these different libraries provide are object-oriented design, um, usually some animation, some uh, drag and drop sometimes. Um, usually they're getting rid of browser quirks, factoring those out for you. Um, usually they provide some widgets or some components that you can reuse in your page. And the other big thing is RPC, which um, you know most people, when they think of AJAX, that's what they're thinking of, which is the way of sending content from the client to the server. Um, the, I consider GWT a little bit beyond the rest of these. One of the issues is when you're writing it directly in JavaScript, um, it's interpreted language. And, and we found that as your source code gets really, really large, um, a lot of these techniques, you know, prototype, object-oriented design, UE provides its own object-oriented design. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of their own convention, and they've come up with some really good models for it. But GWT, the ability to write directly in Java, um, our server is written in Java, all of our other code is written in Java, and it's really it's what we're familiar with in terms of object-oriented design. It's not a matter of using conventions that the different libraries have developed for doing object-oriented design. It's really built into the language at the core. And so GWT also provides a really elegant RPC, which is basically just calling functions, so passing objects to, to the server, server passing objects back. And so there's really not much to think about. We don't have to think about is this JSON data, is it XML data, should we come up with our own string encoding, are we escaping all of our characters properly, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we pass a string to the server, the server passes the string back, we're good to go. Um, the uh, widgets and component support, is, I think it got a lot better recently in GWT, um, but it's, 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 it's based on a pretty, pretty decent uh, DOM structure that has a CSS uh, that's easily tweakable, so we can make it look like our own application and not have to worry about the look and feel. Uh, animation drag and drop are lacking a little bit at this point, but there's some pretty great third library, third party libraries that provide some support for that, and um, it's a good foundation on which those things can be built. So I'm not really worried about the lack of, of those things. And of course, browser quirks are, are handled pretty well because they actually generate a different runtime for each browser. So when you're actually running IE, you're getting a different compiled version of your code in IE that's handling browser quirks in IE. And so pretty psyched about that. So that's why we chose GWT, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So I just want to mention, we've, we already have a lot of rich interaction in our interface. And we started building our own 
basis for that in, in, you know, in JavaScript directly. And then we, we really started leveraging UE the most about a year ago. And, uh, and with the people at UE, Yahoo, who makes the Yahoo uh, UI library, um, it's, uh, it's really a great library, but we just found that using JavaScript directly and trying to use their um, loading techniques and, and techniques for, for doing object-oriented design um, was, was limiting. And as our source code uh, grew and we had more interactive portions of the page, and we really wanted the whole application to be interactive, like what you see with uh, Gmail or something like that, um, we decided we needed to look at, look at other things, and so uh, GWT seems to be the best one.